Why, hello. I got this for $10. So this is a Holland uh, Agile Modulator, model HMA860H. And um, I don't know exactly what Agile and Agile Modulator means. I suspect it's referring to this being commercial grade or the fact that it probably has some sort of a filter to prevent interference on adjacent channels and it gets notched out very nicely but I don't really know so if you know please comment and, and correct me. Anyway it was ten dollars because the ad said it doesn't work or at least the display doesn't work. I've already taken the top off do that and I've already plugged it in and it didn't turn on but take a listen plug this in I don't know if the camera's picking that up probably not dang okay power supply is squealing it's making this high-pitched whine and these look like very low-end capacitors and take a look at these two. I don't, I hate to jump on the capacitor bandwagon every time, but ah! look at the one on the left and look at the one on the right. Those are the same brand capacitors. Does the one on the left look like it's bulging just a little bit to you? Yeah. I'm suspecting that this switch mode power supply has capacitors that have failed and that's why this doesn't turn on. So that's what I'm going to do. If you just want to see this thing work and stuff, skip ahead and hopefully I fixed it. First step is figuring out voltages on this. So you've got this link here, goes to this connector, and then goes off to a bunch of different places. And none of that's labeled. There's no voltages marked on here. Shoot no voltages and then uh, well this is pretty simple this is just uh, literally the power LED so you know it's not working very well when the power LED is not turning on it's coming right from here and then this is the voltage going to this board oh there's like mystery switches on here and stuff well I just checked no schematics online I'm just gonna do some quick measurements to see if I see any voltages here. I'll assume the negative is uh, the black wire. So because you got a black wire here, black wire there, and then this wire bundle has a black wire going there and here. And I'm assuming that these other ones are just voltages that are required. I'm suspecting I'm gonna see nothing there. All right, let's see. So I'm gonna start probing around. Let's check this first connector. Not going to bother with polarity, whatever. Dead. 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 Ooh, no, I got two volts on one here. Dead. Yeah, this sucker's dead. So I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to start checking capacitors. Now, of course, before I pulled this out, I did check continuity in the fuse. It is good. Of course, the bulging capacitor, which doesn't even register, is 680 microfarad. Like, oddball, I, I don't have any 680s. I'm going to have to kludge something together in a temporary solution that, if it works, will become permanent. Electronic repair gods, please forgive me. I have made a kludge capacitor. I don't have a 680 microfarad. Uh, this one is six, where is it? 680 at 10 volts, but I do have a 470 and a 220 at 25 volts. So I have paralleled them together to make a 690 microfarad capacitor. And then let's see how well I can zoom in here. I soldered them together and then I kind of bent the leads offset a little bit so that when I place it in the board here, it has a home and kind of gets held like that. Super ghetto, but you know what? If it works, it works, right? We don't know if it works yet, but if it does work. 220 at 35 volts looks okay. So does the 100 microfarad at 35 volts. Hey, would you look at that? This power supply has a brand, it has a model, and it has the voltages listed. 
So that two volts I measured wasn't even right. You got five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 35, or 25 volts, and 30 volts. Hmm. <laughs> this is one of the two capacitors on the hot side, the small capacitor. Big capacitor tested okay. ESR was a little high. It's like 1.9 ohms instead of 1.4, not that bad. This is atrocious. This is 100 microfarad at 16 volts. 100 microfarad at 16 volts should be 1.6 ohms, not 28 ohms with a 12% loss. And I believe this loss is just straight up shorted, like DC loss. Okay, that's getting replaced. Where there's one bad capacitor, there's many. One microfarad, so that's okay. 25 ohms, no, not okay. That could be a little high. Four ohms, is this, uh, what is this? One microfarad at 50 volts. One microfarad at 50 volts. Yeah, actually that ESR seems okay. Um, let me test a new one. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, this one's even higher. It was brand new. Now this one's problematic. 140, oh, 140 ohms, that's kilo ohms. Oh my God, I was about to say the ESR looks okay. It's only 0.14, but it's very lossy at DC and tests a little low, 140 ohms. Oh Lordy. All right, moment of truth. Plug this in. Hey, it's awake. Got power light there. Um, I think that's just the overhead light coming through this LED. I don't think it's over. Oh, it is over modulating. What? There must be no signal going in. Uh, yeah, and I can change the offset. And I believe this works on cable frequencies being an agile modulator. Keep going. Cool. Well, yeah, so it was four capacitors in various sections of a switch mode power supply. There's the end result. Little uh, trick, which of course I didn't do on the big capacitor, but uh, just mark the ones that you either test or replace. That way you know where you were. Yeah, let's, uh, let's test this out. Okay, have it hooked up. The overmodulating light is no longer on now that I have a signal connected. It's on channel three, because that's a channel that's added on my TV. And it's working. Uh, this is awful an opportunity to test out this HD DVD player I picked up a while ago. Now I can have HD movies. So, play. And grab the remote for the TV. Let's see if we get audio. The picture is great, and this is a LCD, just as a quick test, but, oh, it's very nice. No audio, though. So, what's going on? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's excellent. Well, that's uh, kind of impressive. Uh, I just hooked up a TV over here with just some rabbit ears or a rabbit ear, and it's picking it up with no connection. Oops. I don't even have any sort of antenna. Ooh, it's even demodulating color a little bit there. I don't even have an antenna connected to this. This is just the output of this is going down there and then goes back up into the TV. So, I mean, that's, that is superb, as I would expect from an agile modulator. Awesome. So, adjust the modulation, the color. Oh, that needs a cleaning. Oi. Yeah, that's, TV is really compensating for a weak signal. It's actually very, yeah, I have to clean that adjustment. This TV is actually really good at pulling it in. 
This one was just rolling around like crazy. Cool. All right, I'm going to clean these adjustments. You take a quick look inside here. It's pretty neat. So you look, here's your audio in, here's your video in, and this is an F connector. So uh, I didn't have an F connector to RCA adapter with the correct gender, but I did have the opposite. So I'm just using like a coax patch cable to get video from the DVD player. So you have your input. Then here's your audio and your video IF output. Oh no, I'm sorry. I might be wrong here. Okay, so this is a 4.5 megahertz in. Um, not entirely too sure what that is about. I'm guessing if you want to have something modulated differently. Yeah, I don't know. Here is your audio and video IF out. And then they both go into these inputs here that just go into a combiner and get split out here. And then that loops back to the input that then goes here. And now this modulates on the correct channel. And then it outputs, and I believe this is a little amplifier here, and then gets spit back out right there. And it um, also, let's see if we can follow this here. So this is the non-amplified output, the minus 30 decibels, I believe. Yeah, this is the test point. So this, if I hook this directly to the TV, this would be probably just strong enough to go locally. And then you can attenuate that. And then that comes around from here. Oh, so that comes off of here. Okay, so the attenuation, what? Attenuation's done here? Yeah, it's just some resistors. Huh, cool. I, I would have thought this would have gone before some sort of a RF amplification. This is kind of interesting. To uh, prevent noise and interference, they just sort of cut the insulation off and then solder the, um, the, the braiding for the shield to the board. And I can tell that because over here it's broken. You can see this used to be soldered there. This used to be soldered here. And this used to be soldered right there. They've all just come off. I could probably just tack those back on. But yeah, back to what's cool about this IF. So what I could do is I could take this IF signal and inject it directly into a TV after the tuner. So when that RCA TV I had, the tuner started acting up, I could have theoretically just injected this directly in and bypass the tuner to verify that the TV was working. Because this, I believe, is at like 45 megahertz or something. I think 45 megahertz is like the standard IF frequency I for TVs. I, I don't know. All this stuff's kind of new to me. Well, this is at the other end of the house. And I just hooked a pair of rabbit ears up to that modulator, so that's pretty decent. If this TV is sitting in the same room, it is like crystal clear. So here I am, like right beside it with the rabbit ears. That is just being received from this cable. As usual, you can see these little bars. Um, there is so much noise in these homes, especially say 60 hertz AC rolling on there. I have the same problems transmitting AM. I'm sure it affects TV in a very similar fashion because the video is AM, it's amplitude, amplitude modulated. So this bar here, I'm sure you'd need to get this antenna set up just right where it's not parallel to any AC wires and stuff. Anyway, it works. And it works just great. I'm very happy about this. Also, a lot of noise that you're seeing here is from the actual DVD player. If I lift this up and hold it, say a foot above this, all the noise goes away. 
So yeah, like any transmitter, you placement is key. Uh, you need to place it uh, in an area that doesn't have any interference nearby that could either be picked up by the equipment in here and then amplified on the way out or whatever. I, I don't know. Oh, overmodulate in there. Twerculate that down. Yeah, anyway, very cool. I'm going to play with the channels. See, I can go up to like, I'm not going to go to seven because that's an over the air. Can go to nine. And then flip to VHF high. And there's nine. Again, with all the noise, but it works. Oh, that was just a quick repair video slash demonstration of this Agile modulator. I think it does an excellent job. Uh, tried the 30 minus 30 decibel test point. Of course, it works great on the TV. I'm not going to be running this 24 seven like the other modulators. I really don't need another channel. Uh, those are more just like a fun novelty. Uh, what I would like to use this for is actually sending signals to older TVs that I'm working on. So I can have a nice modulated test signal rather than plugging into the house modulators that are kind of weak in here and stuff like that. Uh, I did notice now this probably normally runs warm, but it is getting pretty warm and it's right on the output here. And I suspect that's because I just shoehorned those rabbit ears on with a crappy matching transformer. And I bet the impedance that this is seeing is nowhere near 75 ohms. So it's all reflecting back inside and heating up. So long term, just random rabbit ears, probably not good for the longevity of this. Uh, I might do some reading for ideas of how to construct an antenna for this, or maybe just plug it directly into the TV with, you know, six or 10 foot uh, coax patch cable. That'd probably be fine. Or even just use this test output. I mean, I'm just plugging it into the TV. Anyway, I'm sure there's lots of people out there who know a lot more about this and might have some things to say, but uh, that's it. Now I just need to figure out how to filter this out. I've seen some circuits that people have made. Uh, or I could just filter out the macrovision over here. Ah, uh, whatever. Ah!